AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Siemens PLM Software, transforming the process of innovation. Here are today's top headlines. Republicans dump the bailout back into the Democrats' lap. Barack Obama considers appointing a car czar, and Audi is bringing back the A2. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Thursday, November 13, 2008, and now the news. The Big Three bailout continues to dominate the news, and now Republicans have dumped the issue in the lap of the Democrats. Treasury Secretary Henry Paulson says automakers can't put their mitts on any of the money earmarked for the financial industry. Democrats are scrambling to see if they can write the necessary legislation to get the industry the money it needs, but this is a lame duck session of Congress when historically, not much of anything gets done. Meanwhile, President-elect Barack Obama is considering appointing a car czar to help formulate policies to help the automotive industry. Our media partner, WWJ News Radio 950, opened up its phone lines to ask listeners who the car czar should be. Topping the list by a wide margin, Roger Penske and Lee Iacocca. Speaking of appointees, is the next energy secretary of the United States going to come from Michigan? Rumors are swirling around two possible candidates. One is Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm, who has been touting green energy for the state. The other is Andrew Liveris, the CEO of Dow Chemical, which is based in Michigan and buys a lot of energy. Mr. Liveris is an Australian, but I hear he's applying for U.S. citizenship. To save cash, General Motors is delaying production of the 2009 Saturn View two-mode hybrid. It was scheduled to begin production in December in Mexico, but now that will not start until early next year. But while GM is trying to cut costs in North America, it's expanding in China and India. According to Wards, GM wants to more than double its market share in India to 10% and will introduce two new models in the next six months and it wants to increase its stake in its joint ventures with Chinese automakers SAIC and Wu Ling. Audi is bringing back the A2. The original version of this B-sized car was sold from 1999 until 2005. It featured an advanced design using an all-aluminum space frame, aluminum body panels, and a sealed engine compartment. But it was pretty pricey and never sold very well. However, a new A2 will definitely help Audi meet strict European CO2 standards. Speaking of clean cars, General Motors will unveil a turbocharged natural gas-powered Opel Zafira at the Bologna Motor Show early next month. Unlike other CNG vehicles, engineers designed the Zafira's fuel tanks so they're integrated into the underbody. That way, they don't take up any interior space. The new CNG-powered Zafira should be on sale by January next year. Coming up next, we'll take a peek at the redesigned 2009 Honda Fit, and we'll be back right after this. Siemens, transforming the process of innovation. Honda completely redesigned its subcompact fit for 2009. The company built on the strengths of the original and added a few noteworthy features. Honda also made the car safer and more powerful, but it's no less versatile. Part of the reason why the fit is so useful is that the back seat flips and folds to make room for all shapes and sizes of cargo. So again, for 2009 Honda Fit, we really set out to enhance all of the great attributes of Fit. And one of those primary features that customers told us they loved so much was the interior versatility and functionality, which is unmatched in any of our competitors. So with this great 60-40 fold-down rear seats, as well as fold-up seat bottom, there's unmatched versatility in the interior for all different types of modules, whether they be tall or long or you have passengers and their cargo. But there's more to the fit than just interior flexibility. It's inexpensive, easy on gas, and drives like a much more expensive car. Overall, it's one of the best subcompacts sold anywhere in the world. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. But don't forget, this is your last chance to enter to win a special edition AutoLine t-shirt and hat. All you have to do is sign up for our free email newsletter. I'll be picking the winner tomorrow on AutoLine Daily, so sign up now. 
Anyway, that's it for today's show. We'll see you tomorrow. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. Auto Line Extra, Don's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutolineDetroit.tv.